Okay, so let's proceed with the first package. So if you remember we're in, or well, you can see that we're in the root, so we need to CD into the LFS directory and then into the sources to start where all the packages are. The first package is bin util, so we we'll begin by extracting it tar minus xvf and you'll get to quickly know these commands um, purely for the fact that you're rep rep repetitively typing these commands in and it's going to be the same sequence each time you extract the package you change into the directory that, that has been created from the package so that's that part there in this case and once you're in that directory that's the point you can start following the instructions in the book. So in this case with bin utils, the first instructions is to make the build. Now you'll see on some of these boxes there's what appears to be several commands. Now in this case there are two commands. How do you know that's two commands? Because, well it'd be easy if I show you one command. This command here has got this backslash at the end of every line. And that tells the um, bash prompt that the command carries on on the next line. So while this command is over several lines, six lines, it is actually one command. Whereas these are individual commands. There's no carry on backslash at the end of it. So although you could easily just copy and paste that in, it's best, especially if you don't know this uh, Linux from scratch, building process very well. It's best, best to put each one in individually and then just check for the output, any output. A lot of these commands in Linux from scratch use a minus V flag which means verbose so it provides some sort of feedback. Generally if the feedback's not good or error is mentioned then the command you've entered has not been entered correctly. Also when you copy and paste just ensure that you haven't missed the first character or indeed the last character when you copy and paste. Also if you tend to let go of the mouse when you're highlighting just below the line you'll find like this case it's automatically taken the end of line character and it's pasted that in as well so that's why the CD build has been acted upon immediately because I, I, I stopped holding the mouse button down below the, the line so it copied the end of character line as well. If you don't want that to happen just leave the cursor at the same line. You probably don't want it to happen most of the times because you might want to paste it in and just examine that it has been pasted correctly before you actually press enter yourself. There's also a note here about timing the commands and how to um, put several commands on one line. Um, I may be using that just to speed it up a little bit but I won't initially just so you can get used to uh, seeing me do individual commands. So the reason why we're creating directory here is, is, is it says to create a dedicated build directory because that's what's recommended by the developers of binutils. So now I can run the first command and this follows a general format with most of these packages. There's a configure command that inspects the system its capabilities. Um, some are quite quick like that and others can take you know, a minute or two. Then there's normally a make command which is what actually does the building and generally after that there's the make install command which is the command that actually installs the software that's been generated, the, the programs or the binaries that have been created via the make command. And that that's generally a fairly standard build process. Some of the packages, especially in this first part, are just a very generic configure, make, make install, and you'll see that triplet of commands repeated quite often, especially in this initial pass in the second part where we're actually building the real system there's only one or two commands like that and there's a lot more customizations for each build so you can see that's built uh, successfully and uh, it says here for building on an x6 x864 create a sim link well in fact you could 
copy and paste this even if you're on 32-bit it just won't do anything um, because it's testing to find out if there is a if it is being run on a 64-bit system and finally we can install the package and that's it so what that's done so far is it's extracted the files it's configured the files the source files it's built the uh, binary files with the make command and we've installed it and if you look at the beginning of the configure commands there's this, there's this um, option called prefix and that tells it where to install the tools which is in the root directory as I say it's not the real root but it will be eventually so if we look at the root because it's a symlink if I do tools on its own sorry um, all right okay yeah yeah, if we look at the tools, you can see, let's do this myself. You can see this is what's just been installed. That's the time. It's 20, well, that was 21 minutes past three. Uh, it's 22 minutes past now, but you can see these directories have just been created. For example, that symlink has just been created. So that's what Pin Utils has installed. And as we build up more and more packages, this, this uh, directory will get populated with more um, directories and files and also it will get bigger so if we do a du-ssh on tools you'll see that's 112 meg after this next one GCC it's quite a big package it will probably jump to half and half a gig or something like that so that's finished with, finished with that one um, always with these um, what I recommend is even if the last command is down here and the rest of it is just explanatory material, use the link at the bottom to go to the next page just in case you miss one important uh, command. So if, if, for example, I could see that this is just a list of commands, I did the link at the top, I may miss an important one right at the very bottom. So it's always best to just carry on, scroll to the very bottom, just read the rest of the page, ensure you're not missing anything important and then click the link at the bottom of that page and of course we can now tidy up so we just go up directory back to the sources rm-rf um, just once and the name of the directory we were in and that's that complete